Guys, today I'm gonna ask you a very simple question. What happens when the first time you discover a new aircraft? Well, you go online, search about it, and you click on a link. There's information displayed about its speed, its range, its power, and so on and so forth. But what if I told you that if you're an aviator, pilot, an engineer, an aeronautical engineer, or anyone who's related to this trade, those information is useless, utterly useless. But do you want to know why? Well, in this video, we will find out. Let's go. Now imagine the first time that you find out about the F-22 and uh, you went online and searched about it and information was displayed about its speed, about its range and so on and so forth and the first thing that you see most of the time is its speed, Mach 2.2. Now, uh, and then also the range, the uh, 1800 miles, but what if I told you that Mach 2.2 is irrelevant and absolutely useless unless the uh, defined altitude is mentioned and also its vector. So the correct uh, term or data to use is Mach 2.2 at about 50,000 feet and in level flight. Now that's an accurate information, but have you ever wondered what is the maximum speed of the F-22 at sea level? Now, it's not sea level literally, it's about 500 to 600 feet because we're not flying in Netherlands, hopefully. Well, at that level, the maximum speed that the F-22 can achieve is Mach 1.2. But you would say that why Mach 1.2 at low level and why Mach 2.2 at that particular uh, altitude, that is 50,000 feet, well, for that, you have to look into how an aircraft takes off. Well, when an F-22 is pulling up its engine, it's stationary. Well, there is no air resistance to it, there's no drag. And then it starts speeding up. At a certain level, the air pressure becomes uh, so much that it can be used to generate lift. It takes off. At this point, when it takes off, the uh, now assuming that uh, the aircraft doesn't go more than about 700 or 600 feet, and it maintains that level flight. At that level flight, the engines are going to apply more thrust and gain more momentum. Now, at a certain uh, certain uh, uh, point in its trajectory, the uh, thrust of the engines will not be enough to overcome the opposing air pressure or drag and that's where the Mach 1.2 comes up. Now, of course, the uh, time to achieve the Mach 1.2 would be relatively uh, faster than it will take to achieve at higher altitudes. I'll tell you why. Now it's flying at level flight at Mach 1.2. What it has to do is use the air pressure it's encountering and divert it downwards. That will create lift and it will climb. Now it climbs to say about 48,000 feet. At that level, the air is thinner and it experiences less drag. So, of course, it can achieve that Mach 2.2 top speed. But there's a caveat. Even though the air is thinner, it's also not as rich in oxygen as the lower levels so the engines might run cooler because of the cooler air but they will not run as uh, the combustion will not be as good as at lower le levels so that means that the Mach 2.2 that has to be achieved by the F-22 will be achieved at a relatively slower pace than at lower level at lower level, the Mach 1.2 will be achieved a little faster. Same is the case for uh, the radius, the uh, 1800 miles, uh, apparently. The 1800 miles is not the F-22 going at Mach 2.2 because people assume that they that is the case because even the media sensationalizes and uh, does not care about details and they mention that the F-22 goes at Mach 2.2 as it has a range of about 1800 miles and that is incorrect and uh, people assume okay it's going Mach 2.2 at 1800 miles but that is not the case. Most fighter jets do not achieve their top speeds most of the time, 95% of the time they're flying at about their cruise speeds 
So um, the range, this range, the 1800 mile radius is probably when the F-22 is carrying two external tanks and probably uh, uh, traveling at about max. 0 0.7 to 0 0.8 and that's when it can probably achieve that 1800 mile radius but that is the maximum possible range and most of the time it's limited to about 1500 mile radius even when it flies in the perfect conditions and now you would be thinking that's also one of the reasons why the J-20 the Chengdu J-20 of China struggles so much in the Tibetan Plateau and the Trans Himalayas and Himalayas because it has the worst possible conditions to fly it has to take off in an environment that is uh, oxy oxygen in that environment is quite less and also the air is thin so less oxygen means the engines of the J-20 produce less power with an already heavy aircraft that weighs as much almost as much as the F-22 and then it has to contend with the already thin air so the lift that it can produce at lower altitudes cannot be produced there. Once it does produce that lift, it has to climb up while its engines are working over time. And also the uh, thin air doesn't do it any favor and the lift is uh, quite substantially less than say uh, somewhere in lower altitude in uh, southern China. So uh, that's the thing about the data about aircraft so next time when you go online and you see something mentioned that's probably something vague and something journalistic and so um, if you are into aircraft so and you are trying to understand aircrafts and you're passionate about them make sure that you always uh, take data and uh, consider it as relative data so the first thing that you have to define is the vector and the other thing that you have to define is the altitude and uh, those are the things that are very important when you're talking about the data of the aircraft so don't fall into the trap don't go online and argue with some chinese person who's also probably has just seen some data on wikipedia and is arguing about that data with you and you have done the same thing that is useless because the data that is mentioned in Wikipedia and also the generalistic data is quite useless as a whole. So that was the truth about the aircraft data and uh, see you in the next video. It's going to be a spicy one and um, subscribe, like, comment and comment below how have you encountered how people think about aircraft data. So uh, until then, uh, Jahan and uh, bye bye.